Hi, Steve here from Photo Mastery Club. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use curves in Photoshop to increase the contrast in your photos. So this is a tip for the beginners, really. Uh, so, you know, if you're just starting out with Photoshop and you're looking to find the sort of the best tools quickly to get up and running, creating great looking images, then this video is going to help. Now, before we get into the tutorial, just a quick word, if you want to download our Photoshop workflow cheat sheet, then just click the link below this video in the description. So this is going to be useful if you're looking to uh, you know, really get some consistency in your landscape editing in Photoshop. So yeah, click the link below the video. Otherwise, let's get started. So the curves adjustment layer is a really powerful tool. And if you haven't used it yet, then it can be found down in the bottom corner here. So just under this little icon, if you pop that, or if you click that, then this menu pops up and you can find the curves adjustment layer right here. And one of the most common and useful um, uses for this is to increase contrast. But before I show you how to do that, just a little bit of background on what we're actually seeing here. So this is the curves adjustment layer. It's been added into our layers panel. And when we look at the properties for this curves adjustment, if you don't see this thing popping up, this other menu popping up, then you can click the properties button there. Or we'll go to window and uh, properties. And what we're looking at here is a, well, we've got this square in the middle and you can see the histogram of the image that has kind of been compressed um, just visually to fit within a square rather than the sort of more usual rectangle shape that we can see up here. I'll just change that to RGB so it kind of looks the same. And yeah, as you can see, this is kind of like just a squished up version of our histogram. And the reason this is visible in this window here is because it helps us to figure out what we're actually affecting because the curves adjustment is used to, to basically affect the brightness of a particular part of the histogram. So for example, what we can do if we want to darken the image, we can click on the line here, this line that's going from bottom left to top right, we can click that and drag the curve downwards. And as it's going, uh, as it's getting lower, you'll see the image gets darker. And if I do the opposite, we can push it up to make the image brighter. So that's great if you want to do that to the whole image, but what if you want to just darken the shadows? What you can do is just, instead of clicking in the middle, you can click down towards the bottom end of the histogram here and drag from that point. And what you'll see is the curve is a slightly different shape and it's, uh, it, it's basically affecting the shadows here more than it is the highlights. It's still affecting the highlights, uh, but another cool thing that you can do with this is actually add a second point and then adjust that. So if we wanted to only adjust and darken this, for example, the bottom half of the histogram, we can grab or we can click and add another control point on the curve there and then drag that upwards so that this top half of the line here is more straight and it's closer to the original and the actual dip in the curve is only happening in the bottom half. So if I disable this layer now, we can see, you know, the, the dark parts are getting a bit darker, but there's not really much change happening in the brighter parts of the image, looking over here in the sky in particular. So let me just reset this for a minute and get back to where we started. So you can do that. You can add multiple control points to the curve and adjust uh, each sort of section of the histogram individually if you want. It can get a bit complicated. Um, you know, I wouldn't recommend using too many control points all on the same curve. But what I've just shown you there is kind of the essence of creating what's known as an S-curve. So in order to actually use this tool to increase contrast in the image, what you can do is add one control point up in the top half of the uh, curve and one in the bottom half. And you can then drag 
the curve or drag the control point in the bottom half of the curve downwards to darken the shadows and then drag the one that's at the top upwards to brighten the highlights and by doing that by brightening highlights and darkening shadows we are by definition increasing the contrast in the image so that's like a really simple uh, sort of straightforward way of um, adding contrast and it's quite flexible as well because you can tweak the amount that you're adding in each area um, as you see fit for the image and just if we look up here in the histogram as well if I toggle the uh, curves adjustment off you'll see the histogram is kind of more bunched up towards the middle and then when I enable this curves adjustment you'll see it kind of stretches out you know the, the bottom half gets closer to the bottom edge and the top half gets closer to the top edge and so that is kind of the visual representation of what's happening here you know we're stretching that histogram out creating contrast and it's all been thanks to just this S curve here so with that said if you'd like to take things a step further and download our free Photoshop workflow PDF uh, cheat sheet then what you'll find inside that is a six stage Photoshop workflow that basically gives you the framework or the skeleton of a framework that you can use to arrange and organize all of the little tips and tutorials that you find here there and everywhere and it gives you a way to put them into the right order and to know what to use and when and with this six stage workflow the, uh, the biggest benefit that you're going to get when you download it and use it is you're going to start to see some consistency in the quality of your processing because it makes sure that you know you're doing everything at the right time and you know you're not being uh, willy-nilly with uh, with all of your edits and trying fancy new techniques here and there without knowing how to replicate the same thing next time you uh, process another image so yeah if you want to download that cheat sheet then there's a link just below this video you can go and click that and get access to the cheat sheet otherwise in the meantime Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video.